So let's start with Parkinson's disease. In Parkinson's disease, there are uh, three components that we'll be looking at. First is the observation. I'm, put, I'm giving it to you in the package or uh, in, the, in the title of uh, Parkinson's disease, but that's part of every movement disorder examination. Observations are important. So the observation include observation of facial features and body features, what we call morphism, how the body is shaped, how the different uh, relationships or different parts of the body are with each other, the, the gestures, facial gestures and body gestures, and then the third part will be examination of the rest of the body as you are doing a particular examination. Okay, So when someone said in front of you uh, and you look at him, you're thinking in your brain, okay, there is pulling of the uh, frontalis muscle and the eyebrows are lifted up or the patient has a concerned facies and the corrugator are in or you look at the um, pulling of the nasolabial fold muscle, facial muscle and the nasolabial folds are deep. So you will describe that the patient has a frontalis sign, meaning that this, and deep nasolabial fold which suggests a facial dystonia. Similarly, you're looking at uh, morphism of the face, so saying that the the eyes are spaced apart too much or too close together or the ear insertion is too low or too high. A normal distance between the two eyes is equal to width of one eye itself. The term we use is intercanthal distance. Canthus is the uh, end of the eye, so inner canthus and outer canthus. So in, in inner can, intercanthus distance should be equal to size of one eye opening. The term we use for eye opening is palpebral fissure. So we say the, the intercanthal distance is normal, the upper lip is smooth, there is no high arch palate, and the ear insertion is normal, which is a way of saying that these were the things we looked at, and the facial morphism was normal. Similarly, you can look at the body morphism. Are the arms too long, or the legs too long? Arms are going below uh, the normal uh, length expected. Uh, the fifth and fourth metacarpal phalanges, the, uh, the creases, the palmar creases, you can say, you know, the palmar creases are abnormal or normal, and these are the morphism features. So that's uh, the second level of observation. So for, you know, one is morphism, second is gestures. So we talked about facial uh, gestures like pulling up the eyebrows or deepness of your fold. You're also looking at blinking, and you're also looking at normal spontaneous movement, are the legs crossed or not, are the patient moving their hand or not, are they playing with that, are the facial expressions, you know, they look surprised or they look good, or they kind of reacting to you, are they nodding their head or not, are they moving their hand at this talk or not, okay? So that would be the second level of observation, facial features, body features. The third level of observation is observing what happens to the rest of the body as they do other tasks. So for example, somebody has a tremor in the right hand and it's a resting tremor. You say, okay, open and close the, the left hand, okay? So they start doing opening and closing. But that's not the only thing that you're watching. You're also watching what happens to the tremor on the right hand. You're also watching what happens to the face. Are they starting to have a dystonic tremor of the head as they open and close the hand? What happens to their feet? Are they getting a pulling of the feet as they're opening and closing the hand? So anytime you have them do a certain task, you are observing the whole body, not just that task. So that's observation. 